Uh, there was probably a mixture of techniques used in all the buildings. Uh, what she's talking about as far as nanothermite, thermite is, I'll, I'll just diverge over to thermite for a minute. Thermite is a material that's made of powdered iron oxide and raw aluminum, I mean elemental aluminum. And the iron and the aluminum and then there's the oxygen attached to the iron, okay? Iron holds on to that oxygen, sorta. Aluminum has a much stronger attraction for the oxygen than the iron does. So if you heat up this mixture until the oxygen can get free from the iron, it just gloms on to the aluminum in a very intense reaction that liberates lots of energy in the form of high temperature. And they can use this, it's not normally thought of as an explosive, it's something that they used to use for welding railroad tracks, uh, the bombs they dropped on Dresden, all that, the fire bombing that they used in World War II, this thermite, they use it to demolish tanks, I mean there's all kinds of uses of thermite, but it's basically a very high temperature incendiary. Now if you're going to use thermite in part of this demolition, what it would be doing would probably be some of the pre-weakening. It's a slower process than an explosion. It's not a high explosive, okay? But uh, they can use it for the pre-weakening and then they probably had some kind of more conventional charges to, uh, you know, as far as time charges to bring it all down at the final step. However, the thermite that they have discovered at, in the dust of the World Trade Center consists of thermite made of nanoparticles. So the, what a nanoparticle is, is a particle that's smaller than a micron. Okay, so uh, you know, a thousand times smaller than a, a micron is like, all right, like a red blood cell is like seven microns, I believe it is, all right, across. So we're talking about, huh? Okay. Okay, so you go smaller than that. The particles that make up this nanothermite are a very uniform uh, consistency. The iron oxide that's in there is about, uh, I believe it's 100, 100 nanometers across, a tenth of a micron, and the flakes of aluminum that are in there are about, I think they said it was like 50 nanometers thick, little tiny flakes. And this is all embedded in a polymer that holds it all together. So it's a very uniform mixture that's bonded together. It's a manufactured material. It's stuff that's manufactured in the military labs. It's not available like at Lawrence Livermore and Sandia and places like this. It's not available on the open market, okay? They found flakes, they, we, uh, Stephen Jones, who was quoted on that video you saw earlier. Stephen Jones and a number of others that are, uh, he's a physicist and then Niels Harris, a chemist from Denmark and there's a bunch of these guys who collaborated. They studied this stuff for 18 months. They used electron microscopes. They used uh, all sorts of different ways of analyzing this. And it basically points to the fact that uh, they have flakes of unexploded nanothermite in the dust. When you take one of these flakes and you put it in a digital calorimeter and you raise the temperature, there comes a point where it triggers. And when it triggers, it goes off, it releases lots of energy very quickly. What you have in the ashes after you're done are microspheres of iron. Because the iron from the iron oxide is now turned into just plain iron. The oxygen is forming with aluminum to form aluminum oxide, which is like a white powder. And so you have these hot, iron little microspheres that result, which means that when that little flake reacted, it produced temperatures hot enough to melt iron. So in other words, it's behaving like thermite. So these little tiny red chips, they show that yes, it appears to have the consistency 
has the composition of thermite, and it also behaves like thermite. And it's thermite made with nanoparticles. The reason they make it with tiny particles is it gives you a more reactive surface. So you can trigger it with a lower temperature and you get a very quick reaction. You can actually tailor it to act like an explosive. Okay, so it's not a high explosive like RDX or something, but it's, it can actually be used as an explosive. It can be used as rocket fuel. It can be used as an incendiary. Very, okay. So this stuff was found in large quantities in the dust. And the byproducts, which are these iron spheres, they had billions of these iron spheres in the dust. And so these are signs that this was present. Now, does that mean that was the thing they used to, to blow it up? It doesn't mean that. It means it was used. They also could have used more conventional explosives along with it. There was a question at the back, though. Um, no, hundreds of tons. Hundreds of tons. They, the estimates that I have seen on how much of the nanothermite was involved based on, you take the iron spheres in the dust and you can compute how much material produced all of those iron spheres. These iron spheres are not molten steel. These are not from the structural steel. This is the iron that originated as part of the thermite itself, okay? But from the chemical analysis of the spheres, it's pure iron, not steel, okay? And so from the estimate of how much of that there was, the estimates that I have heard Niels Harriton others uh, make about this was that it's probably on the order of, I mean, there, it's a guesstimate, but on the order of 100 tons rather than, say, a ton or something like that. Now, there's a famous, for me it's famous, there's a quote when he was being interviewed by, a, uh, by the press, and they say, how do they sneak that in there, you know? Well, it's not under somebody's turban. You know, how do you get all that stuff into the Trade Center to uh, take it down? And his answer, very good answer, I thought, is on pallets. Okay? So, you basically imagine this. You get a guy with a workman's shirt on, a label on the back, says Ace Elevator. They set out their cones, and they've shut down, you know, one elevator shaft at a time, and they're doing elevator repairs. Guess what? They were doing elevator repairs for nine months leading up to 9-11. All right? So these elevator repairmen would have access to all the core columns from the elevator shafts. And they could just wheel anything you want in there. They get passed through security. So if security was told to let these guys in, they can get in. You don't have to sneak it in. You just have to have somebody authorized to let you through. How about the perimeter columns? There were some of the perimeter columns where there's evidence of monkeying with them too. Uh, there's, lots, there's a lot of the floors that were not fully occupied. So there would be a lot of unoccupied territory they would have access to. And even if, you know, there's all kinds of rationales. Workmen are, are around these buildings all the time. But the, the major thing they had to do is take out the core. And the core they had access to through the elevators. <laughs>